Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Burton Breaker podcast. We got a banger for you. We got a first for you. We also have a second, too, because believe it or not, not a lot of girls want to come on this show. So breaking a lot of ground here, and uh, we're happy to do it. We have the one and only Sydney Siegel from Survivor. What was this? Survivor Season 41, baby. Season 41. And she's actually here, ladies and gentlemen. We didn't clickbait. Nothing. She's here. Sydney, say hi to the fans. Hello, fans. We got her. We got her. Bert, Bert's here too, but yeah, yeah. We, uh, we don't really care about Bert. So, Sydney, thank you so much for coming on the show. It is, uh, you're, like I said, you're the first uh, Survivor contestant to come on the show. We've reached out to literally everybody, and uh, you're the only one that said, sure, I'll do it. I'll go on a shitty really? podcast. Yeah. Exciting. Very exciting. <laughs> yeah. Love that for me. Yeah. No, and uh, um, second girl to come on. We had a girl come on back on episode 69 out of all of them. So that was very exciting. Um, and I don't think she talks to us anymore. I think she blocked us everywhere. No, I'm kidding. Latin cats. <laughs> the show. Yeah. Um, but happy to have you on. So, Sydney, uh, why don't you just kind of introduce yourself? Tell everybody uh, who you are. I'm sure everyone knows already, but for like the six people that, that might not know. Well, I'm Sydney. I'm 26. I'm from Los Angeles, but I live in New York. Um, I was a contestant on season 41 of Survivor. People ask me if I won. I never concede that I lost. I always just say <laughs> I'm the people's winner. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. So that I am. I'm the people's winner of Survivor. I'm a law student. And yeah, nothing too crazy. I don't know. I'm a world traveler. Mm -hmm. I am single and mingling and all of the above yeah. is enjoying life mm -hmm. heck yeah well you came to the right place the burton burger podcast to solve all of those problems there um so uh because burt is also no i'm kidding but anyways <laughs> we got we got a lot of stuff that we got to talk to you about sydney and um very happy you specifically came on the show because uh we found out what was it a month ago maybe on twitter who your very favorite contestant is on Survivor, Mr. Russell Hands. He's our hero as well. Role model. Our villain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's like a father. Um, I don't know. Is he one of the ones that blocked us? I don't think so. Um, I don't think so. <laughs> he might have. But yeah. So uh, Russell Hands, he's been uh, reaching out to you, trying to set some stuff up. What's, uh, what's going on with you and Russ? You guys best friends? You guys homies? I mean, yeah. Like, my childhood dream is my current reality. And that's mm -hmm. to be best friends with Russell Hands. <laughs> he was my Lord and savior. Like anyone <laughs> who can just run shit, like, come on. The thing with Survivor is everyone has one vote. Like everybody mm -hmm. has equal power. Yet Russell with his one vote and social prowess was able to just control the game. And like, I like the fact that he wasn't very... I don't want to say, like correct and consider <laughs> mm -hmm. it like it made for great TV and like it was just hilarious. He was so funny and I always say anyone that's unapologetically themselves like I can appreciate. So like I appreciate Russell. So like during like the season obviously like we're not supposed to really interact with prior uh contestants, but like you know like some people do and like it's unavoidable because some contestants like no prior contestants and whatnot. But I really wanted to reach out to Russell, but, like, I knew I had to wait. Because as much as I love him, I'm like, I don't trust him. He's going to air me out. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I waited, and I waited. And the moment I could, I was like, okay, I got to just let it be known my love. <laughs> sure. Man. Sure. Okay. And, and the love is definitely reciprocal. Uh, he's. It seems like he's been trying to uh, slide into your DMs and everything. I mean, I'm sure that happens happens a lot being the queen that you are sydney i mean it's literally in your twitter handle <laughs> so um you got you got big bad russell coming in so he was asking about what are the odds of of you guys going on a date and then next thing you know um sydney's retweeting it so i think we got a future like blood and water uh contestants here going forward that'd be great that'd be pretty badass if you ask me <laughs> that would be so badass Ugh. I love him. I wanted to go to Houston um, to visit, maybe for like the Survivor 42 premiere. 
Mm -hmm. But it's my spring break, and I think I'd rather go travel than go to Houston. So, <laughs> true. My right? youth is fleeting, but Russell will be there forever. He will be, and he'll be waiting for you. <laughs> As <laughs> you should. Uh huh. Yeah. No. And uh, Russell's kind of the, a big reason why I got into to Survivor as well. So I grew up in an area where uh, TV wasn't very uh, sparse. I guess like it was very few and far between. And CBS was one of the channels we got and with Survivor going on there, I was kind of forced to watch it. Not really forced, like my fucking parents didn't glue my eyes open and make me watch it or anything. But he was he was one of the contestants there and like kind of liked him for the same reasons that uh, I like you, because just being a badass and uh, doing what you want to do and being that unapologetic person and things like that. So definitely uh, one of the coolest characters out there. Um, definitely you. his uh, strategy could have been a little bit different, I think, but uh, to get a couple more jury votes there, you know, fuck those people too bitter, <laughs> too bitter. So bitter. Mm -hmm. I would have been it's bitter. Crazy. Like, <laughs> I always said like the people like, Oh, who would you have voted for at the end? And honestly, my answer is, like, whoever I hated the least. Like, sure. I would like to say that it's, like, oh, whoever played the best game. But I'm bitter. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, yeah. you, like, screw me. I'm like, I don't like you. Why mm -hmm. do you get a million dollars? Like, great. It was probably the best move of your life to screw me. But that doesn't mm -hmm. mean I want to give you a million dollars for it. Mm -hmm. I give yeah. it to someone I like, which would yep. make for bad TV. But I don't uh -huh. care. Yeah, mm. absolutely. And I saw one of the interviews that you've done on YouTube, and, and you're, you answered it with uh, Tiffany. You said Tiffany was would be one of the ones that you thought could have gone very far with it. And uh, Bert and I were a pretty big fan of her gameplay as well Yeah, with everything that went down. But unfortunately, it, it didn't play out that way. Were you happy? With how things ended outside of <laughs> outside of your survivor career, I mean, were you like, hell yeah, Erica got it, or you're like, yeah, maybe this person could have gotten it, or what are your thoughts? I mean, when I first found out, I was like, oh my god, how could that have happened? And then I was like, kind of <laughs> just like breaking it down, I'm like, wait, it's actually not that bad. Mm -hmm. Like, I, like once I was gone, and like my homies, like other than like mm -hmm. Danny and Deshaun making it all, Tiffany. Um, I liked Xander. I liked Evie. Like, everyone else mm -hmm. was just kind of like, eh, like, sure, fine, yeah. I guess. Like, I thought, like, Ricard played an incredible game. I think mm -hmm. he definitely um, would have been a great winner to have. But, like, am I happy about it? Like, I would have been, I think I would have had the same reaction for everybody. Like, if it's sure. not me, then I'm just kind of annoyed. <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. I yeah, think it fair. was, like, a very, like, if I'm going to look at it completely objectively, I think it's a solid winner. I think it's a very average winner. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very textbook survivor game that was played and mm -hmm. was it worthy of winning? Maybe. Was it unworthy? No. Mm -hmm. Um so that's just kind of like the reaction where it's kind of neither here nor there. But mm -hmm. like shit, if I won and everyone's like she doesn't deserve it, I would be like, Well fuck you, I'm wiping my ass with a hundred right now. Like <laughs> <it's> you. So <laughs> yeah. like doesn't even matter what we think. Like, there's still a millionaire, and it's not fucking me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as it's not her, I mean, everyone else can go fuck themselves kind of thing. I mean, and that 100%. goes... Yeah, it goes along with the whole Queen Sydney attitude. And uh, definitely love it, love it, love it, and glad that it, it continues outside of the game. Really seemed like you were your true self uh, on Survivor. So that was kind of where my one of my questions was going is just kind of that vibe that you give off. Like, I think a word that you used a lot is self-obsessed <laughs> and, and I think that's badass. So tell us a little bit about that personality and bringing that onto, onto Viber. I don't even know where to begin. Like <laughs> when I was a kid, I had an interview and like I said, like, they're like, why do you like soccer? And I was like, because I'm not at you. it. Like, yeah. No, I think you're thinking of, like, my high school interview. But there was one when I was, like, eight. Like on Yeah, there was one TV. on your Instagram. Uh, you were, you were like, a baby in it. Yeah. And then the high school one <laughs> yeah, went yeah. viral on, like, Runner YouTube. So, like, when I was a kid, my parents were like, you need to write a letter to Humble Sydney. I'm just like, no. <laughs> like, no. So the self-obsession, like I said in my pregame interviews, it's nature and nurture. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. my parents definitely nursed the ego completely. Mm -hmm. But then also, like, it has to be, like, somewhat ingrained in my nature. But then mm -hmm. also at the same time, it's really easy to be, like, very cocky when you're 
good looking and athletic, you do mm-hmm. well, you win. It's mm-hmm. like, it's hard to be humble, like... which was another one of my Instagram captions, hard to be humble. So <laughs> it became this thing yeah. where the self-obsession was, it, as much as my parents almost wanted to combat it at a certain point, because like they, you know, I'm like a woman, like what's becoming of a woman and, you know, sure. like what, um, you know, like what's tasteful is almost become kind of like my persona and personality that I think people have like grown to love and appreciate because Mm -hmm. like, I don't consider myself to be like the textbook definition of a narcissist where like a narcissist, like as much as they love themselves, like they love themselves, like relative to others and like putting others down and hating others where mine is truly just a self obsession where it's just like, I love me, but I also love everyone else. I think other people are great too. I just, I really think the highest of myself. So like, as time has gone on, I think people have just kind of under like came to understand my essence and like the self obsession has nothing to do with like how nice I am, mean I am. It's like I'm a very like giving, maternal, passive person who just happens to like love thyself so very much. Like that being portrayed on TV was completely accurate, and I'm happy for the world to see that. Um, and I think a lot of people assume that I was putting on an act or, you know, maybe I was a little more elevated for this show and Mm -hmm. whatever. Like, you know, it's edited to make me look more ostentatious than I am. But in actuality, I don't think they could have depicted me any better given their like limited time, um, and having to like share the screen. But if you really, really think about it, like I was pre-merge, I Mm -hmm. never voted. Um, I never, I'd gone to one tribal council where I was one of five people eligible. I didn't really have an opportunity to be villainous yet. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of Mm -hmm. painted as a villain. Like that's an accomplishment. Like how can someone who did nothing have such a strong persona? Mm -hmm. Because I'm Sydney Siegel. It's like, why was I getting so many confessionals when there was really no edit to be had? I'm not Mm -hmm. having a winner's edit. I'm like, even like a robbed goddess edit. Fine. Arguably, (laughs) I'm a robbed goddess. But it's not like there was this fight and anything that that was taken away. But like, Mm -hmm. I didn't do anything yet. I'm still like, like, I still was given that edit because even the editors and production, they loved it. Yeah. Like it didn't mm-hmm. matter what I did. I could have done anything. And I did absolutely nothing. Yet I still have this incredible fantastic edit which I think really captures me. Yeah, absolutely. And uh it definitely just um and it's awesome to see that of course there's going to be the heightened personality stuff in front of things, but just the overall pretty natural performance of of a contestant is always good to see. Uh I love the the part where um you were trying to uh, start a fire or something like that and just got fucking pissed off and <laughs> just stormed away. And I'm like, hell yeah, if that's not the most natural reaction, I do the same thing. I'd probably <laughs> fucking kick the shit and say, fuck this fire and <laughs> get the hell out of there. Absolutely. I was so annoyed because like you're doing <laughs> it. And I made so much fire before I left with like garden sticks. Uh-huh. The stupid friggin' machete is like dull uh-huh. and it's so annoying. So I'm like doing it. I'm filthy and I'm just like, fuck this, dude. <laughs> After that, I didn't touch the machete for like three days because I had a blister. So I'm like, okay. ow, my hand hurts. Therefore, I will not be touching the machete. <laughs> like, fuck <laughs> it. Like, what? Are, yeah. And it was, it was like, yeah, I was just like annoyed also because that day, I think we'd won a challenge or it was an off day or something. I was just so sick of being with those people that it was just like a lot of buildup where I kind of was just like this frustration. I'm like, and now we're here and now I can't make fire. And now I still have to breathe the same oxygen as these losers. I'm like, God, like literally yeah. take my life. <laughs> yeah. What they, now they bleeped out the, uh, the words that you were saying when that happened. Do you remember what you said in that particular moment? I'm guessing it was like, gosh, darn it. Or something like that. Yeah, definitely got shot on it. Yeah. Like, fuck yeah. this shit. <laughs> it was funny because Danny was like, girl, like, you're going to have no screen time because all they're going to do is, like, bleep, 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 and then, like, mm-hmm. blurring my nudity. And it's like, I'm just gonna, a one giant bleep. And then <laughs> it really did make me very conscious of my potty mouth, which, again, not very becoming of a woman is something that I have worked on because <laughs> of that experience. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Sure. Well, don't worry. We we don't blurp a whole lot here um, at, at no. Burton Burger. So um, just when my co-host talks most of the time, but mm-hmm. not because mm-hmm. of specific words, just because of the cringeness to it. So, but starting yeah. off with the Survivor adventure, because it is quite the process to go from your everyday person to being a contestant on the show and just so you know sydney there is somebody in this call right now that desperately desperately wants to uh be on the show that you were on any tips and tricks along the way would be helpful there i said it for you bert oh thank you thanks <laughs> yeah yeah no kidding okay. no it's not bird it's me like i've been dreaming like literally dreaming not even like a cringy kind of dream like it's my passion like literally fucking falling asleep getting fist bumps from jeff probes so so any advice along the way but that first process i mean where does this all begin because they always say submit your tape online and i've done it like maybe five fucking times now at this point bastards won't reach out how what, what did that journey look like for you i mean uh was it like one tape and you were in was it 20 i mean what, what did that look like so i um i actually applied to the amazing race um i my mentality was i wanted to just like put something in the universe and because you can apply as many times so i'm like i'm just gonna send the video it's gonna be shit i don't care because um, I was applying with my friend. We were both in L.A. at the time. I'm like, let's just throw something out there, and then we can, like, put something really good together, like, eventually. Mm-hmm. Right? That's what I, my thought process was. So we, like, propped up the iPhone and, like, just talked for, like, yeah, way too long. I think it was, like, a seven-minute video. I didn't nice. even read the instructions. I submitted nice. the application, and I think it was about two months later I got a call being like, listen – we want you for Survivor. I mean, their fear for me was, like, I'd be too fancy. Because, like, me and my friend tried to, like, play, like, the Beverly Hills thing. Like, ooh, let's okay. get some, like, Beverly Hills bitches. But <laughs> I was like, no, no, no. I actually am quite rugged sometimes. Um, but it was, I don't know if it was serendipity or what. Um, but, like, my advice, I would say, is, like, just don't do the most. Like, you know, like the saying, do less more often, just do fucking less. Like I bet people are doing these like massive videos, crazy this, but really they're looking for the core and they're not looking for like editing a video. Like they, I was literally talking to a propped iPhone, but I was like talking the same way I'm talking now. Mm -hmm. I didn't have anything scripted. I'm very good off the cuff. So what I've told people, cause like, listen, I don't have their criteria, but what I do know is that they cast very different types of people, right? Like, and one thing I think they loved about me was the fact that you literally cannot pluck another Sydney Siegel off the street. You can't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, there's some people, there's like a million of them. You can probably pluck another one off the street. For me, I'm literally one of a kind. A one of a kind can mean a lot of things. So if you're like an extremely shy person, for example, yeah, maybe you don't think shy is a personality trait that they want for Survivor. Maybe it does, maybe it is. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's part mm-hmm. of the social experiment. So whatever personality traits are, like, very, very, like, very much you, like, you play those up. Like, I am a cocky cocky narcissistic asshole. So, like, Mm -hmm. I talk about myself and I, like, like, some of myself self-deprecating, but, like, what it is. But the self-deprecation comes from a place of, like, oh, if I'm not the best, I'm the worst, right? So, like, even Mm -hmm. my Instagram caption when I, like, got off Survivor was, like, or my location was Loser Town. (laughs) I saw that, yeah. So it's like That's playing funny. up like whatever quality is very much you. And I don't think they want desperate either. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. You're like, I want this so badly. Well, same with a million other people. Yeah. Yeah, that was my thing. I was like, how can I do this tape to where it's kind of unique and it's not things that they've heard literally a billion other times. And I think the answer is kind of what you said, just being yourself there because – uh, for the most part, there is only one you. I mean, there's a lot of personalities that are very similar to yours. But, uh, I mean, there's only one you. And uh, that they want to see you. I mean, they even say, like, in their captions, like, don't fucking wear costumes and do all that cringe shit. We don't want to see that. <laughs> Where people dress up and do little cute skits and everything. So, But that's that's crazy that you weren't even, like, trying for this show. You were trying for The Amazing Race. And then here they are asking about survivors so were you like a fan of the of the show beforehand or what was your story with that no 
Yeah, no, yeah, definitely. I grew up watching Survivor. Like, okay. as a show, I love Survivor much more than The Amazing Race. But, sure. like, as an experience, I was like, oh, of course I want to do Survivor over The Amazing Race. Why would I want to mm-hmm. do... Or, uh, of course I want to do Amazing Race over Survivor. Why would I want to starve on an island? So, like, I've been a fan. Yep. I think I've watched every season, maybe, like, give or take, like, one or two. Definitely mm-hmm. not a super fan where, like, I literally remember every... Oh, like, this that boot number mm-hmm. seven, season 36. Yep. Like, I, fuck do I remember that? But, um, no, like, I watched them all in real time. Like, I loved it growing up. Like, we would have Survivor Thursdays when it was on Thursday. Yep. And it was, like, exactly what CBS wanted. Like, a family getting together once a week, like, sitting around the TV and enjoying the show. And, like, that was my experience with it. Like, I had a buff when I was a kid. You know, I had my favorite players. Like, I remember when James Clement was, like, People Magazine, Sexiest yep. Man Alive. Like, yep. that shit was framed in my room. Mm-hmm. Um, but, no, definitely been a fan. I chose not to watch previous seasons before I went on the island just because I felt like it stressed me out too much. Mm -hmm. Um, But Mm -hmm. during the quarantine, I did watch the ones that were available just because I felt like other people were. So I just didn't want that disadvantage. But I really, like, I didn't rewatch anything. I really Mm -hmm. didn't. I I didn't want to. And when you got that call, Sydney, like, how, like, when, when you answered it, I'm guessing it wasn't like Jeff saying, "Yo, it's Jeff. What's good? You uh, yeah, you no. bored next month? We uh, no. So how did how did that go? So I like forgot I had submitted the video. So it's funny because one of my friends does self tapes, like to try to be an actress. And I remember once I did one with her, and I'm like, God, I was so good. I'm totally gonna get discovered. <laughs> so I get this call, and it's like, oh, CBS. And my first thought is like, I'm actually getting discovered from the self tape. And it's like, oh, you applied for the amazing. I'm like, oh my god and the casting director's like well you're not gonna have amazing race i'm like oh she's like but watch for survivor and i'm like whoa like i'm like no i love it and i'm like i go straight into like interview mode like acting mode because mm-hmm. in my head i'm like fuck dude <laughs> like, should have said that to you dude Damn i was, so it. I was like <laughs> fuck and i'm like no no love not it like, and it's true. like i love it as a show <laughs> this is what i want to do like this is great and i was like very like I, I have to obviously seize the moment and take the opportunity but mm-hmm. um yeah and i like called my dad immediately after and he was like freaking out like my whole family's freaking out like obviously it's so exciting but from that moment forward it was just pure anxiety because i got the call january the very end of january 2019 I remember it was the day i was flying back to california for my cousin's wedding i had like gotten my first law school rejection and a call from cbs on the same day oh and wow i know so I remember that and then um, but I was getting a call for filming in 2020 so because they were already season 39 was done yeah um, casting and then 40 was when I was at war so Mm -hmm. in 2019 I got a call to go on for May 2020 because I was supposed to do season 42 because I was in school so mm-hmm. then with everything with the pandemic and whatnot, like, would you do 41? Like, so many pushbacks, this, that, and the other. Um, and obviously that's what I ended up doing. But it was a whole process. And I would say the overarching theme of it was anxiety. Like, the, it's mm-hmm. something I, like, didn't want to do, but I was not going to say no to. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I'm glad I did it. Mm-hmm. Now, did the number just come up, like, as a number from Los Angeles or, or something like that? Because I, I've gotten to the point to where my phone's, like, spam or likely spam. I'm like, yo, here it is. <laughs> this is it. Yeah. Or it's, like, a random number. And then they're asking me about my car's extended warranty or health insurance questions, stuff like that. Oh, my God, literally. Like, I, at this point, I only, like, accept L.A. or, like, New York numbers. Like, yesterday, I'm like, ooh, but- a New York with an area code I like don't usually see, it. and it was like the a call I've been waiting for, and I was like obviously super stoked. But mm-hmm. no, it was um, it was a random three two three area code. Sure. Okay. Santa Monica or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, and I, I just I I don't answer all of them, but I I sure hope the uh, the casting director or whoever it is would. Uh, you know, politely leave a leave a voicemail because daddy might be busy and can't answer. So I'd gladly return your call at my earliest convenience kind of thing. So and that was it. Like it was one call and you said yes. And that was it. I think I read online somewhere that they do like they interview somebody like five times before. Oh, they, yeah. No, they that was just the first call. 
Okay. So that was just the first one. Then it's like a whole process. Then it's sure. like I was constantly in touch with her. And then like, like, I think she does, like she did her own like individual vetting to like see if then she, like you interview with um, casting directors. So then you do a couple Zoom interviews. And then mm-hmm. from the Zoom interviews, then you like, you get chosen to go to LA and do the week of casting. Um, so okay. I did. You have to do all these forms, physicals, whatnot. So I'll, obviously that kind of stuff. And then there is a full week of casting where mm-hmm. you are just in interviews and um, medical this and psych this and taking this test. So people were cut like every day from LA. Um, and you don't know, like, and then they'll just put you on a plane like that day or the next day. But I wasn't cut. But then they don't, even if you're not cut, that doesn't mean you're on. So they don't tell you until a couple weeks before. Obviously, my situation was different because of COVID. So still, I didn't get the final call that I was officially on until January of 2021. Wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah, which is, like, annoying. But that's also, like, more time than they usually give. I think they gave the people for 39 three weeks. That's insane. Like, you made the cut, and then three weeks later, you're going on 39? Wow. Yes. Wow. Wow. Boy, that pissed my work off, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what the hell? I know, right? Oh, uh, okay. So what was that week of casting like where it's just, like, it sounds like American Idol <laughs> where you're doing all this auditioning and stuff and they're just cutting people left and right and final four, <laughs> final two, final, you know what I mean? Like, this is before you even play the fucking game. Like, holy shit, it's like a game before the game even starts. Well, they tell you that because, like, obviously, like, we're not allowed to talk to anybody mm-hmm. because um, they want your first interaction with everybody to be the moment you meet on the island and the cameras are rolling. Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah, like when you're eating, you're kind of like looking like, oh, like this person's not eating meat. Like they're they must be like vegetarian or vegan or it's like, oh, this person like is fully tatted wearing cowboy boots and literally chomping on burgers Like, every dinner, it's, like, you know, just trying to, like, in a way, stereotype and cast type and kind of see, like, where you fit in, see who's, like, giving you friendly eye contact, see who's not. So, like, sure, like, there is a little bit of a game beforehand. But um, the interviews, like, it's not, it's not a game. It's literally, like, them deciding whether or not you're a good personality for the show and a good personality for, for the season. So I remember there was one point where um, the casting director told me, like, I like I think you're good, but I don't know if you're good for the theme. I don't mm-hmm. know what the theme was. I don't know what the theme was going to be. I don't know anything about that. But that's mm-hmm. another thing to take into consideration. So, like, people that have been in the pipeline and in the system for years, that's a good key, maybe next one. But they're, like, all, almost like a permanent backup. Mm-hmm. And and that kind of makes sense, like with what you were saying, where you were supposed to be forty two, and then it ended up being forty one. It kind of just depends on on what they're trying to do. So it sounds like your time will come eventually, hopefully, but could also turn into uh, something big. Because I know Tina, the f- uh, first woman that won Survivor back in season two, she was like a backup as well. Like they they talked about that where she wasn't even supposed to be on the show. But she was a backup, and the person that she was backing up for or whatever <laughs> ended up not making it work, and then she won the whole fucking thing. So it, it definitely is crazy for that kind of shit. And, uh, like, you get the call back in January of 2019, and then January 2021, now all of a sudden it's, <laughs> you're, you're leaving to go to Fiji and, and everything like that. So it's, it's definitely the process, it sounds like. Lots of little things coming together. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was actually curious. What is it like? So after the call, the 30 days, whatever, what is it like the day that you had to leave for the island? My God, I feel like I'm blacked out. I'm trying to think. <laughs> well, I... She we was trash. Well, <laughs> Drunk yeah, we as fuck, just like, getting ready God, to go. <laughs> something I haven't been asked. But we all fly from LA. Um, obviously still not talking. So I'm from LA, so I flew home a little earlier um kind of got to say my goodbyes see people and then i was dropped off at the hotel and you just go from there so i guess i had the benefit of having a little bit of rest beforehand mm-hmm. right and then you're just like fuck <laughs> I can't <believe> this is happening. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. yeah 
it's got to be super surreal. So then they're like, all right, get in a boat, get in the plane or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Here we fucking go. Yeah, and then it's like, that's it. And it, it was so much of an anticipation, like getting to that point. And then also just like how many negative COVID tests we had to have. Like I just oh, yeah. kind of <laughs> like let God take the wheel. I didn't do anything <laughs> different. I didn't quarantine. I wasn't like specifically careful the one thing i did do is like i made my dad get a test before i came back because he's like the least covid safe person ever and i'm like dad sure. like <laughs> just like get just please like if there's one person that's gonna give me covid honestly it's probably you because you are literally reckless like just get a fucking ass and that was like the one precaution i took okay. but i just i was at that point i'm like listen if it's gonna happen it's gonna happen but um yeah getting i think like the biggest adrenaline in rush was just like all the negative tests Right. Do you know if they actually had like anybody set aside or what it what happened if somebody was positive? They can't go. You just. But then they're going to be short a person, right? Like, do they have backups? No, there was, think, or... there was al- alternates. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. There's there's a shit ton of backups. I'm guessing. There, so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, now, if there are like health issues or something, like, do they still like keep an eye out or something? They're like, all right, get this straightened out. Maybe we can get you in a future season or something. Like, we'll keep an eye on you or, or something like that. Or are you just, like, straight out of luck at that point? I have no idea. I literally sure. have no clue. <laughs> Sydney I mean, was I just healthy and a badass right from the beginning, so she didn't have to worry about that yeah, shit. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, I remember they're like, okay, you're good. But, like, you know, like, pending blood results. And I'm like, ah. Because they, like, obviously, like, legally, they don't like, yeah, you're on. And then it's like, oh, it's psych. You're... Like iron is way too low or some whatever. Mm-hmm. I have no idea. So I remember they said that and I'm like, oh my god, wait, what should I be worried? It's like, well, last time you're fine. <laughs> like okay. oh, you know, I mean, like, I have no clue. I can imagine like some blood work, like you could probably fix it, but if it's like a problem with your heart, you can't go on. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And and then I know like um the same kind of thing happened with um Jimmy Johnson, the the NFL head coach that went on and he was like, Yeah, no, I applied for it and I got far and uh they told me I had high blood pressure, so Survivor saved my life because I was gonna fucking die if I didn't <laughs> know about that. So going off of like your the the blood work and stuff, I'm sure they they'll give you a chance. It's just like you got to go in and so many things have to be right. And then your health on top of that has to be right. It's just like, do I start, start dieting now? So just in case something works out, I'll be good to go. Um, things like that. So going forward with that, I mean, you, you, you get on the Island, you're, you're playing the game and everything like that. I mean, what was like the behind the scenes? Like, I mean, that's, that's the interesting part because I've seen pictures of like the cast and crew where they have like two people talking and they have like 60 cameras. Uh, That's an exaggeration, obviously, but uh, they got all these people and nice clothes and everything around these rugged contestants. I mean, what's the behind the scenes part? Like, I mean, talking to those people or not talking to them or seeing them shit like that Um, you can't like they can't meddle at all like so no one you're not interacting with them like really it's i mean it's pretty uninteresting you just have to kind of like move out of the way like when you're on the path so they can like kind of like run in front of you and things like that but there's absolutely no interaction um it's just it's a lot of bodies sometimes and like Mm -hmm. that's that's something that i think like takes getting used to and i think surprises people but then at the same time doesn't because it's like okay well we're expecting um i think like less about the camp life, more like the challenges, like how many cameras, how many people are there. (laughs) Like that's kind of the crazy part. Like when you first walk up, like I remember just being extremely astonished by just like the pure presence of just people and production. And I kept thinking how much money this fucking costs. Like how much money does this (laughs) cost to put on? Like I have no idea, but like, oh my God, there's so many things and people. But yeah, behind the scenes is just not anything i just i don't i like know about it. i'm just like staring and like <laughs> just dealing and going through the motions and trying not to like die of misery mm-hmm. yeah yeah because they have like engineers and stuff out there too for the challenges don't they, they have everything like everything Literally everything <laughs> there's All like right. like even like swimming like on every like every corner of every platform like there are like divers mm-hmm. like underwater okay. there's yeah everything everything you can think of they have damn and some 
Yeah, and for a show that's been on for as long as Survivor has been, I'm sure they fucking they Got they've learned the a lot. Yeah, 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 and they they figured out a lot of shit along the way. So, what can you tell us about the challenges? I mean, were they a lot of fun to to be in? Were they very like? You were talking about the anxiety before the game started. Um, I, what can you tell us about the challenges? That's a big part of, of the game. Yeah, they were so fun. It was something like I get so nervous, but like they weren't as hard as I thought they would be. Like they're very daunting, um, mm-hmm. but like they're they're so fun. Like I was an athlete growing up, and I haven't mm-hmm. done competitive sports in quite a while, so just like getting that adrenaline rush that very much mimicked like what I went through my entire life just as a competitive athlete was amazing. And it was something that I didn't realize I missed and something that I didn't realize I wanted. So it was so, it was so much fun. Like Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I looked forward to them. I hated having to like sit out of them and (laughs) like the one I did sit out of, but no, I remember um, it was Danny who was like, isn't it just like fun to be competitive again? I was like, Oh my God. Like, you're right. Like, it totally mm-hmm. is. So mm-hmm. it is, um, it's great. It, it really is. And like every element of the challenge is well thought out. And yeah, it was just, it felt like kind of being a kid again. Okay. Yeah. And, and that's the, the crazy part. I mean, um, with the, with the challenges, with everything that's endearing and, and then we're just talking about the setup with it and, and being in awe with everything is, is crazy with that. So we got to talk about the challenge, Miss Siegel, that you kicked ass in. Barely, barely missed first place where you built a fucking like building block out of with your fucking mm-hmm. feet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everything. Oh, yes. God damn, I'm impressed by that. You must have abs of steel. Like you, one of those things where you like can smash a two by four against it and the board will break <laughs> in half. Those obliques. Yeah, no, that was, like, wild. I remember, it's crazy because I actually missed one of the base blocks. So Mm -hmm. I had, I built, like, most of it missing a base block, which is even harder, obviously. So I kind of had to undo some to put some back, which made it much, much easier. So, like, yes, I lost time, but, like, I was very impressed with myself for having done it the way I did it and still being successful. Um, But, no, it's, like, looking back, I was... It, it's funny in the moment I was pissed, but I was like, all right, like it, it, you get like a one in what seven shot of winning. Like mm-hmm. I'm not going to like kick myself. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. But well, looking back, I'm like, fuck, like if I would have like grabbed the flag, like higher up instead of mm-hmm. lower down, like now I'm like seeing things like, like Ricard did that I didn't do. And I'm like, ugh, that's so annoying. I just mm-hmm. like, it doesn't matter the challenge. doesn't matter what, place i get if i didn't win i'm gonna be pissed and like being so close is like heartbreaking and i feel like that's always what happens on survivor it's like oh like the million dollar flag or it's like the person (laughs) just barely lost is the one that gets out so it's like i feel like that almost precipitated my elimination because that's just like the poetic justice of survivor Mm -hmm. yeah yeah be tortured just have it recorded (laughs) having to relive it again You know, know. and and that challenge specifically, Sydney, like, um, I'm a pretty big guy. I I play sports and stuff like that. Um, no, nowhere near like uh, Danny or anything like that, but, uh, I feel, I always felt like the muscle stuff I'd be be good at, but as, as far as abs go, like, fuck that shit. I think honestly, like I would have just kicked mine over and said, Jeff, I'm just watching everybody here. This ain't, this ain't (laughs) happening. This is, this is not that hard. (laughs) (laughs) You'd be fine. Like, looking at, like, Evie, for example, not the athlete of the season. She was, she did well. Like, it's not, mm-hmm. like, the hardest thing in the world. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure. I, like, I just shit my pants right there on live TV, and I'm like, yeah, this is <laughs> – this ain't happening, Jeff. I'm just going to sit up and watch it with you. This <laughs> – just, just risk it there. But, yeah, I mean, that's how a lot of things are. I mean – I'm I'm sure you had this too. I mean, where the challenges where you're like, okay, I think I would be good at this. I would excel at this, uh, but maybe these ones I wouldn't be so good at. Like, um, for example, the endurance ones where you just have to stand there with the fucking block on your head. I think right there, I would just flat out be like, no, not not doing this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I think I would have been very good at those. But I think you have an idea. Like even 
the one where I had to like walk across a rope. I remember like looking at Dan and being like, can I do that? Because I think Nasir was like, oh, it's all about the upper body. I'm like, um, okay, I have no upper body. So <laughs> and Dan was like, don't listen to him. And I was like kind of nervous. And I was like, that show's easy. But like, I'm like, I played, I want to say a little reserved, like, like, oh, who wants to undo the key? Not me. Mm-hmm. Who wants to like do the do the knots? Not me. Someone was like, who wants to do the puzzle? <laughs> Not fucking me. Because my thing is like, I didn't need to shine at least in the group stage, but I just couldn't be a liability. And right. that's what I kept telling myself is just don't be a liability. So the only things that I ever um, volunteered for was swimming because I knew I was like the strongest swimmer on my tribe, and I mm-hmm. also know I'm a very strong swimmer in general. Mm-hmm. and right. i'm an endurance athlete so like whatever mm-hmm. the swimming was like i knew i could do it and confidently like the knot who knows maybe i was shaking and nervous <laughs> like mm-hmm. fuck i don't know so yeah i just my thing was just don't be a liability that is like the one time you'd want to speak up about it like when the whole team's on the line you're like damn i, I guess i can do the knot if you guys really want me to but <laughs> yeah right and like yeah. everyone's just like yeah whatever i'll do the knot like even in the big merge challenge i remember they're like, oh, like Sydney's like small. Like, why don't you go on top of that big ball? And I was like, that looks really high. Like, <laughs> I don't think I'll be able to. I was like, I don't think I'll be able to reach it. Like, in all honesty. And then they're like, yeah, yeah, you're right. Probably could have reached it, but I also was just like not trying to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if somebody's more confident, let them do it. <laughs> yeah, right. And like in retrospect, if I were to play again, I could fucking do it. Oh, but yeah. I was definitely like not wanting to draw any sort of attention to myself because my entire essence is like attention to myself Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're constantly dancing the whole time i feel like you can tell yeah you don't want to hit the gas at the wrong time exactly like don't want to play too hard too soon Mm -hmm. yeah yeah when when jeff's explaining the challenge to everybody like they do uh where we see every episode where they you see people acting it oh and they have like actors showing the challenges does anybody go like hang on what what the fuck do we do at this part right here i i back it up a little bit there's a lot of steps here jeff can we can we get this ran over again no well we're like explain the challenges further so there's like okay. the preliminary explanation and then yeah like yeah then there's another explanation but that was something i was nervous for but not something you have to worry about if you're on sure sure okay yeah. i'll make sure i yeah, don't worry about that <laughs> yeah. um uh i'll put my worries elsewhere but yeah that was always my big thing because when i even when i see it on tv i just go to my phone I'm like yeah i'm not gonna pick up on this i'll just <laughs> yeah, right. I'll, well I'll just... i still fucked up sometimes like i remember once i climbed the throne thing and i was like no i think that happened to me twice oh, no. actually i mean obviously it's like edited out like yeah you just don't literally twice mm-hmm. but i did yeah okay. she's climbing up the fucking ladder on the other side and shit like that <laughs> and he's like what the hell are you doing <laughs> literally kind of going forward with some other things that happened with the, the the final tribal council that you had that was a clusterfuck to say the least right like <laughs> there was so much shit going on with that and uh, where people had like the live thing where they were talking about who to vote for who to talk to this and that and everything like that i mean you you talked about kind of dealing with some anxiety beforehand. I mean, this must have been one of the bigger <laughs> anxious moments that you've had for the show. Yeah, I think, like, my anxieties for the show were more, like, my actual, like, physical well-being. Like, I knew I would live, okay. but I didn't want to be in pain. <laughs> like, I didn't want my hunger to mani- manifest itself into literal pain. I didn't want, like, the sleep deprivation to, like, manifest itself in a headache. Like, I thought yeah. I would be, like itchy and dirty and like i just i thought i would actually physically just be in pain the whole time like Mm -hmm. like severe pain but that tribal i was just like i'm just like god take the wheel like (laughs) it was a clusterfuck Mm -hmm. and i like obviously kind of just reading the room i was thinking well i would vote me out because i'm the only one with zero blowback And yeah. it was, I was exactly where I wanted to be. Like, I wanted to be kind of in between two alliances instead of, like, in an alliance. Mm-hmm. And, like, I was in on both sides, right? Like, I was where I wanted to be, but where I wanted to be wasn't very conducive to that tribal council specifically. So mm-hmm. it was crazy because I just did not think my vote was going to matter. I did not think Erica had a vote because mm-hmm. she, like, reverse history. So yeah. I was just kind of doing the math and thinking, like, huh, 
Like, I don't think my vote's going to matter that much. Or, like, it just makes sense to get me out, so I might as well play my shot in the dark. I yeah. felt like it was going to swing either way. Um, and then, obviously, the worst case happened, which, mm. for my narcissistic self, like, honestly, <laughs> like, it was very easy for me to post-mortem the game because, mm. like, I got fucked, one. And then, two, because, like, those losers didn't vote me out. I voted myself <laughs> out. Yeah. So, it's like... <laughs> Take like, that. Yeah. yeah. So that made me feel better. <laughs> mm-hmm. So uh, you ended up playing the the shot in the dark, and that that leads me to a question that uh, one of a good friend of the show asked. We have um, Stephen um, from Survivor Quotes X on Twitter. We we had him come on, and um, he posts a lot of like quotes from other Survivor contestants and things like that. I'm not sure if uh, you're following him yet, but he'll definitely tag you in some stuff eventually. Because let's admit, Sydney said a lot of memorable things on survivor yeah. season 41 but yeah. he wanted me to ask you um with the with the shot in the dark you were the only one that played it um that season do you think like if if you didn't play yours like they would have even talked about it or, or shown it or um they oh, still would have really, had it that's a good question i think they probably would have just because the thing that i think shot in the dark does is that it kind of makes every vote a blindside or a split mm-hmm, because right. like does, the thing yep. with like a million dollars is like you don't want to risk it even if it's a one in six chance so it's like oh let's vote this person out oh what if they play their shot in the dark sure the odds are like they're gonna if they do play it like they're not gonna be safe you never want to risk it so it kind of made a layer of gameplay and paranoia just like that much more. So like everything either had to be a total blindside or votes were split for every single vote. Okay. Yeah. And it de- definitely does bring a different element to the game there. But um, I have heard that they were going to implement something in one season, but it never came up. Um, so then they kind of held off and then maybe brought it into a different a different season. Yeah. So that was what he was wondering um, if, if that was something that would happen. And it is, it's an interesting thing. So when you go up to like the, the booth there or whatever, was there like an envelope for you to reach in and grab, or was it like rolling a die or, or how did that process go? I think they so talked you put about your it. Dice, you, so you put the, your dice in the, a little holder, like a little dice holder, and then you pick, draw a scroll. There's six mm-hmm. scrolls. I okay. Just chose one in my bra. Gotcha. Well, you grabbed the fucking wrong one, Sydney. Apparently, God damn it. I know. Literally, not all of us can be as lucky as Deshaun. <laughs> that was insane, too. Yeah. 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 It, it's it's funny because they they talked about that because that that's like a specific like thing that I like learned in psychology 101 or something. I can't remember what it's called. Like the it's like the Monty, the Monty Hall, Python. right? Yeah, Monty, Monty Hall, Hall, yeah. Think, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and like I'm pretty sure he didn't play that in his favor. No, like he I didn't. think you're supposed to switch, I'm pretty sure, yeah. after Jeff asked him to switch. And he's like, nope, stick in. And I'm like, oh, he just fucked himself. <laughs> and uh nope. No, like, he he beat the odds twice. So um nice. so you you played your shot up in the shot in the dark. And uh, Jeff's getting ready to talk, and then you kind of say, Jeff, and then he stops and looks at you, and then you're like, I played my shot in the dark. I don't know. I feel like that would be a badass moment where you you literally stop Jeff Pros from talking. You're like, "Uh uh-uh, I I need your (laughs) attention. Look over here, camera on me. I played my shot in the dark. Let's see what happened. I know. But even when I watched it back, Jeff was like, you played your shot in the dark. Mm -hmm. As if, like, I was the biggest idiot ever. Like, you so played a one in six shot at saying in the game. You're like, all right. And I'm like, oh, fuck. But, that was a joke. <laughs> yeah, hell? like, I did play it. Um, mm-hmm. Well, it's funny because when we first got introduced to it, I'm like, I'm not going to play this shit. This is stupid. I was like, this is one <laughs> yeah. of those driver twists. Like, you can't nice keep track of everything. So I'm just going to act like it doesn't exist because, like, like it, I'm just like, I'm not going to, like, stress myself out. I, stress myself out that much for a 17 percent chance right it's bad i didn't even know it's it was in my bag i didn't even know if it was in my bag i was like when i realized i want to play i was like god damn it i hope i still have this shit <laughs> put a rock in there or something you're like yeah we'll make it work <laughs> yeah literally yeah yeah i'm guessing you couldn't like i don't know take a 
take a little peek or something. You're like, mm, nope, don't yeah. want that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just have your own piece of paper and write on it, and like, safe, lol. <laughs> like, write on the parchment. Safe. Yeah. And roll it up. Yeah, you say safe, bitch, or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Funny. Yeah. So you go up, get in your torch snuffed. I mean, I always feel like that's like an iconic moment when when that happens. I mean, did it feel like that for you or were you just fucking pissed off? I'm pretty sure when you walked out, Sydney, didn't you give everyone the, the finger when, when you were walking out? I gave just like a peace sign because I was like, bye. Oh, oh peace yeah. sign. Okay. Yeah, I, they were like, bye, bye. Like, love you. I'm like, fuck you. Like, <laughs> yeah. what do you mean? Like, everyone that's like, good luck, guys. Good luck. I prayed for rain. I play, prayed for sharks. <laughs> I prayed for like lightning on heads. I'm like, dude. Like, screw that. Like, because I always thought about it as a kid, right? Like, you, you think of that iconic moment of getting your torch snuffed. I'm like, what would I say? Like, am I like, oh, you just got eliminated, right? What would I say? I'm like, oh, would I be happy? Would I be sad? Like, how would I want to be portrayed? Like, okay, you can decide. And I think that's something every everybody thinks about. Mm -hmm. um, but in all honesty, I don't even know how people could even think of being happy. It was just like in the moment how I was feeling. And how I was feeling was... I never want to see anyone again in my life. And <laughs> no. ha like, I literally talking about like how I've been the same ever since I was born. Like, I remember mm. when I was a kid playing soccer, like I'd lose a game, a soccer game, a Y S O something dumb. And I'd be like, well, at least I'm prettier than them. <laughs> or like, like really immature. It's like, oh, same, at least like, I have like a really great family that they probably don't have. Or it's like, oh, at least like, at least my mom I loves me. Nice <laughs> neighborhood. I don't know. I would just think of the most absurd things that would just make me feel better. <laughs> so then like this like my 25 year old self at the time same thing fuck these people my life is better uh -huh. that was my consolation mm -hmm. that's fair yeah absolutely what would happen if like you didn't leave like jeff's like time for you to go and you're like no time no. for you to fucking go dude yeah. no <laughs> yeah right Good. i've always wondered that though i'm guessing like would security like toss you over their shoulder and walk out or do, or do you just have no idea? I mean, I'm pretty sure people can be civil enough to where they're like, okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll leave. JK, JK. <laughs> I have no idea, but... um, Yeah. Jeff will grab you by your ear. I know, right? <laughs> Please. And I'd sue. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. yeah. So then uh, you're, you're walking down the path, everything like that. You just go got voted out. Uh, the, the show makes it look like you could walk into complete fucking darkness. I mean... You have like people like pointing at you, telling you where to go, or yeah, uh, yeah. There's okay. people there the whole time. I, that was something I was actually scared of because I was reading, like, oh, like how not to be the first boot, right? Like mm -hmm. I kept reading that, and then one of the things is like, oh, what was so like memorable about her is she got lost on her way out. Mm -hmm. was, I'm like, no way. I was mm -hmm. like, that would be me. Like I'm so <laughs> directionally challenged. It's like unbelievable. Mm -hmm. It's like un fucking believable. Like I am. I get lost while I have like my earphones in my ear. Like mm. I'm not kidding. Like with the navigation talking to me and staring <laughs> at a map. It's like I'm so directionally challenged. Like that was a fear of mine. Like going on the island, like I'm going to get lost. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. 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 No. And and going into like your personal life a little bit, you say you say you travel a lot and you've been yes. to like fifty different countries or some shit. So um, your lack of travel skills might have made it what like sixty countries at that point, or <laughs> I know, right? No, I mean it's funny because like one of the countries I went to, like I got on the wrong boat. Not like <laughs> oh, it Lord. was like not the wrong boat. Like I booked this boat that was called the Dubrovnik that I thought was going to Dubrovnik, but instead it was going to Montenegro. So you know uh, things happen. Yeah, no, I can see why you get those two mixed up. It definitely makes sense there. The traveling uh, is awesome and everything like that that you do. Uh, went through your, your Insta and saw that you've been to a bunch of awesome fucking places. Um, and then you're also a, a law student, too. Um, yeah. I saw you made some a recent post on Insta about that, too. So um, however much you're comfortable talking about with, with your real job i guess um what's the what's the kind of goal with that i mean um with uh going to law school and everything like that are you going to be like the next saul goodman or uh, <laughs> how does that work um well i'll be a third generation esquire Ooh, um, okay no. so That's my badass. grandfather was an entertainment attorney 
my dad is does tax and civil litigation. So I think like I think I want to go into criminal defense. Um, I know I want to go into criminal defense. Just interviewing, I have heard back from some places, and just trying to make my final decisions. But yeah, like I think that I will be a career litigator. That's a plan. Don't plan okay. on going into like management or anything. Sure. Um, and you know, it depends on my mood. Sometimes I want to parlay that into being the president. Other times I want to be <laughs> yeah, a stay at home that. sugar baby tennis mom who like has yep. my kids and plays tennis at the country club all day and then waits for hobby to come home from work. But it really mm-hmm. depends on my mood. Sure. But I do, um, I do love being in court. I do love criminal court and it's been a lot of fun. And I think like for me, like I've, I hate working. It's never mm-hmm. like, I haven't mm-hmm. really worked for longer than like four months at a time. So that's mm-hmm. sick. So I like kind of just wanted to pick a career that I would be just like constantly interested. And I think with like litigating and especially like criminal defense, it's like one day you're doing arraignments and the next day you're doing like a hearing, then you're like doing some research, then you're investigating. And, you know, at the same time, like you're confronted with some really uncomfortable situations. So it's like, mm-hmm. you're also constantly combating your moral compass and mm-hmm. also like just confronting like, huge world issues and that will just keep me interested even if the work becomes more like run of the mill like the issues will never be run of the mill like yeah yeah, it probably becomes desensitized at a certain point but um i do think it'll just like keep me interested and the goal is just not be miserable Mm -hmm. (laughs) and every time Mm -hmm. i've worked i've been miserable Mm -hmm. therefore i yeah that's why i just haven't worked very much (laughs) Mm-hmm. Well, it sounds like it's something that you're super passionate about, though. Yeah, I, I do love it. It's um, it's nice having a direction because, like, at least in undergrad, I had no idea what I wanted to do. And then, like, when it came to, like, applying for internships, it's like, oh, okay, like, what type of business? Because it's, like, what a lot of people do at Columbia. Like, like mm-hmm. what, like, sector of business do you want to do? Do you want to do finance? Do you want to do marketing? Do you want to do sales? Do what, like, do you want to do PR? And then it's, like, then it's like, or do you apply for like a company? Like, do I want to work at Nike or do I want to work at yeah. Apple or do I want to do tech? And it doesn't matter what I'm doing for Nike. I'm working for Nike so I can do anything. It's like, wait, yep. but no, like maybe yeah. I really like crisis management, but the only place I could do it's like a biotech engineering firm. And it's like, you're just confronted with just like a plethora of options. Uh, so like going into law, like knowing I wanted to do it and obviously having the full support of my family, especially like, my dad, who like we're very, very close, like just him being so excited to have like a third generation Esquire in the family. Um, and then also knowing like I just have always been fascinated with crime and like like in college I didn't have Netflix. I would watch YouTube Dateline, like and YouTube sure. Friends yeah. Files. I'm like, mm-hmm. that's what I did. So I'm like, wait, I could do that all the time if I want. And then, you know, looking into it and then obviously becoming very passionate about it. Um it's it's been exciting it's been exciting and i think the most exciting part is like finding something you like which is uh, honestly i think more uncommon than we think Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and and i i think that's super important too to to find that that makes life a little bit easier too Mm -hmm. to enjoy um to to find those Mm -hmm. those passions so but no, I mean that that's a real um beautiful answer and I uh speaking of beautiful, I mean Sydney shoot or shoot. Uh, what are you doing this weekend? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I I was like it's restaurant week in New York, so I'm like I was literally brainstorming outfits cuz I'm just going to be like bopping around being cute in the city. Hell yeah. No, I told my I told my girlfriend that I was going to ask you that. So, um <laughs> Yeah. You got permission. Yeah, yeah. She was like, "What if she says yes?" And I'm like, "No." Nah, she commented on Instagram that um, that the, uh, you need to have a ring that you can see from the moon. And my, unfortunately, the podcast just doesn't cover bills like that. So, <laughs> Sydney, yeah. going back to talking about you because this is all this episode is about is Sydney Siegel. Wow. We hit you up on Twitter and we gave you a little bit of homework to do before you came on this show um what we do with all of our guests if we remember is we ask them what is the most fucked up slash weirdest movie you have ever seen and uh you accepted this challenge with open arms you're like fuck i gotta think i've seen some demented shit and we're like hell yeah those are the answers that we need 
so uh, I'm, I'm excited to hear. I mean, what is uh, what is your submission for for this week's uh, movie special? And uh, Bert and I will watch it together and talk about it next week, and, and we'll see just how fucked up the movie really is. Okay, so I'm not a huge movie buff, but I took this so seriously. I recently went on a hinge date, <laughs> and the guy's like literally studying film. Like, what is the most fucked up movie you've ever seen? And I need to see it so I can actually use this for the podcast. And it's called Titan. It's a okay. French film, and it is fucked up. It's just oh, fucking boy. weird. So Titan. watch Titan, and I can't wait to hear. Like, you guys are just going to be like, like your faces the whole time. are just going to be like, what the fuck? I'm going to melt. It's just, it's just absolutely demented. I'm like Because I was thinking, like, Us, which you've probably seen. But like, us? yeah, no, I haven't seen that one, but um, I well, know that what you're was my about. answer. But I okay. figured you've probably seen it, and it was just like, it's just one of those things. Was like, who fucking thought of this? Is just fucking ass. You know what I mean? And like, but oh, I just yeah. felt like that was too mainstream. So if we're going less mainstream, Titan. But okay. also watch us. All right, we'll put us down for you, but we'll check out us as well for your hinge date. Yes. Um, so better, better hope uh, Russell don't hear about this episode. Where he hears you going on hinge dates. Well, I can't put my eggs in one basket. Yeah, true, you got to be true. smart. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. can. Uh, Mormon's still pretty cool. You can do reverse Mormonism, I guess. So. Oh, I'm so down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So is Bert. He's into that shit. But okay, so <laughs> us slash Titan. How do you Titan? I know. All I'm looking at is fucking moons. Titan. The moon. She said it was French. Do you do you know oh, how it's spelled? Cindy? Um, Titan with an A with an E at the end. T I T A N E. Titan. Twenty twenty one film. Does that sound right? It's the one where like somebody gets knocked up by a car. Oh. Um. Gets. Oh yeah, involved in her film. fetish for cars. Yeah, I think it's this one right here. Oh well. Okay. Gets knocked up by a car. Okay, that's, that's the kind of fuck up okay. we're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Ah. Uh, okay. Yeah. No, I saw one with my brother a month ago where like a recliner chair was um, eating people and shit. So, um, I I'm not scared anymore. <laughs> she, she said fucked up in French film, and I'm like, damn, I didn't really want to do damn. scary. But. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Here we are. So, all right, and we'll we'll, we'll check out us though for you um, as well. Yeah. So, no, yeah. we don't we don't have any hinge dates or anything to go on. So, um, we we got we got plenty of time to watch your movies. So, with what, yeah, just a quick question on that. I mean, um, dating apps in general. I mean, Hinge is definitely one of my favorite ones that I've noticed. Uh, Bert definitely goes along with the grinder crowd and everything. Oh, so, of course, yeah, yeah. Just uh, it, it, is does that kind of like? Do you get people sliding in, being like, "Yo, were you on Survivor?" On Lol. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty yes. sure I'd be sending you super likes and roses left and right. Oh, thank you. But yeah, I do get some people that are like, oh my god. Because I have one picture on my profile, obviously, like being on Survivor. But I was actually actually surprised at how little attention it was getting. And mm -hmm. then all of a sudden it just got like a huge influx. But yeah, no, definitely get some of those. But nothing okay. too crazy. Sure. I feel like I get the same attention with or without it. <laughs> yeah. in, in your profile, do you say like contestant on Survivor 41 or do you just kind of hide that? Or Because I'd be flexing yeah. that fucking shit left and right. Like you'd have no idea. I'd leave this podcast in a heartbeat and <laughs> let it just be called Bert and that's it. I mean, I'd be <laughs> like, I'm, I'm writing this. I'm writing books. I'm trying to get on David Letterman or whoever the hell's on nowadays. I mean, I'd be going ham with that but but you said you don't no so let's go through my profile first i have a picture of me at bond street drinking a yuzu martini duh and yeah. it says my mantra is and believe it or not this was up before the episode aired it's they hate me because they ain't me oh. so I was, that was also my senior quote in high mm -hmm. school so it's like something <laughs> i've said for forever really? then it's me being cute in italy just like in the streets <laughs> of sicily um five six um, JD Candidate, Columbia, Brooklyn Law School, from LA, 
dating me will look like and it's like me eating pasta because you will be feeding me that's uh -huh. a must. A must. what if i told you i've been to 50 countries me then mm. me on survivor just kind of like thrown in there it says you should not go out with me if you're from new jersey or live off the j train i don't do that <laughs> okay. i said this could be us and it's like me running with my high school coach in the canyons and then oh, my yeah. uniform and it's me in a bikini okay. so it's a solid profile i have to say yeah 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 no absolutely mine's a uh, pretty fucking pathetic um uh, mm -hmm. but it, it got me somebody, so hey. I, I got my own Sydney Siegel. You know what I mean? Like that that that's, that's yeah. Yeah, I'm sure she'll like hearing that or she'll be super <laughs> offended. I'm not sure. So um, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. I mean she didn't uh she didn't go on Survivor, but uh she's she it, it's pretty up there, you know what I mean? Uh she she uh is a multi billionaire, so that that no I'm kidding, but of course. <laughs> oh damn, I was gonna say hook me up. Yeah, seriously. Hinge is actually where I've like gotten the most like serious relationships out of as well. So, um I I've thought about writing my um love story to Hinge so maybe they could sponsor the fucking podcast or something. So <laughs> we can yeah. uh we can pay for those uh student loan bills, Bert, <laughs> which Sydney knows all about being a law student and everything. Uh I'm sure that's it, is that where like the first chunk of your million would have went? I'm sure you get asked that a lot. Like, what would you do with a million? But I'm guessing you would clear the fucking student loans first. Yeah, you know, just I got pretty lucky. I ran track. College was paid for. I got a oh, most of my law school paid for. Um, <laughs> and then you know whatever was left because well, I got an academic scholarship. Smart me. Damn. And smart and, and athletic. Now I see why yeah, Russell I, likes you so much. I know. I'm, what do I say? Like, good looking, savvy as hell, you know. Mm -hmm. Because Amy. Um, but no, I would have I invested in a duplex. I actually had a duplex and a triplex picked out in L.A. Mm -hmm. And I had my, I literally thought I was winning this million. Like, I had my loan in <laughs> place, 3.5%. Like, I was going 50-50 with my dad. Like, this shit was done. I had the numbers crunched. Like, oh, my God, dude. Damn. Like, oh my god. <laughs> Had it already out and everything, and the bank comes back and they're holding their hand out, and you just fucking smack it away. <laughs> yup, basically. Yeah. yeah. Basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I know some people in the comments, you're going to get a lot of hate and everything, seeing that you voted yourself out and all of this bullshit, but I think you had a really good response with. Um, with how you responded and saying you didn't know Deshaun was gonna—it's all hind hindsight, right? right? Like, obviously, us bitches sitting on the couch watching you play—we know everything. Oh yeah, uh, we we see the confessions, we see people admitting stuff. I mean, you guys, you guys—it's it's a hard game to to play. Yeah, honestly, I think it's one of those things that you made it on the fucking show. They didn't fuck off. <laughs> so yeah, right. Uh, and, and definitely not only did you make it on the show, but you were a character that stood out big time and, uh, was, uh, a, a big personality for the show that people will remember. It's not one of those things where you flew under the radar. I mean, you were the fucking radar for the most part, right? I mean, Thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it controlled all of that. So other than that, I mean, we're starting to get towards the, the end of the show here. I don't want to keep you keep you too much longer but Bert was there was there anything else that you wanted to ask Sydney before we wrap everything up I've actually uh, <laughs> been thinking so I watched uh, I think another interview you had it was like a podcast or something and you mentioned that you like to hike a lot I actually hate hiking but I do hike a lot <laughs> okay I was gonna <laughs> say how does that work with being directionally challenged? Oh my god, dude. <laughs> I, like, like, that's why she hates it, bro. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I cannot. Yeah, no. I look like, so it's funny cuz like I don't like to hike and like every time I hike I'm like, why am I doing this? Like <laughs> I did 5 days in in the Andes mountains and I'm like never again will I do a hike. And then all of a sudden I'm in Guatemala doing like a 2-day hike sleeping at altitude. But no, it is like oh my gosh. I I like oh my gosh. My last hike I was with like this guy I met um just like on the hike and we were like way ahead of the crowd and like we had to beg the tour guide like the guy like please let us go ahead like 
we're gonna miss sundown like these losers are too slow so we're like <laughs> running to the top and I, I kept asking him I was like you know how to get back right you know how to get back because like I do not trust myself. Because I, I do not. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, yeah. I 100% do not. So I was like, please. I was like, you know how to get back. He's like, yes, and I know how to get back. Like, you know how to get back? He's like, I know how to get back. So that is definitely a challenge. And like, it's funny because like, even when I first moved to New York and I'm on Google Maps and it's like, go oh, Southwest on 26th Street. I would pull out a fucking compass. Okay. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. My iPhone compass because I like, didn't know which way south was. Now I do. I'm like slightly better, but no, it took right. me 26 years of my life to realize that like when I'm on the 10 west in LA, that's going towards the ocean. <laughs> and I'm going oh, west. Okay. I know. It took me so freaking long, but <laughs> there's just something in my brain that doesn't connect. And I've cried about it many times because I, I get lost very often and it's very upsetting. But it made me more savvy. Like when I travel, people are like, okay, you travel alone a lot. Like you're always getting lost. It's like, well, I download off offline maps beforehand. Okay. I have yeah. external chargers because if that phone dies, I am done. <laughs> you're going to die. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> I will die. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, she made it on Survivor though. So I guess they don't really yeah. give a shit if uh, you're going to die out in the wilderness. They're like, hey, good TV, <laughs> <Yeah>. right? Lol. <laughs> Oh yeah, definitely a, a fear of mine was getting lost on yeah. island. Mm -hmm. Everybody's like, "Hey, I need you to come help get me water." And you're like, "I don't want to get lost, okay? I don't need to talk strategy. I just don't want to die out in the woods." Oh no, we put like a coconut or something like where I turned to the water well because it took me days. And I'm That's telling awesome. you, we're just not that big. It's really mm -hmm. not, mm -hmm. but it took days. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're like that Balto movie where he carves out the fucking bark in the trees so he doesn't get lost so right. <laughs> she's scratching away at the trees profusely yeah. last last question i have for you i mean when you when when was the first time you you met jeff and and what was that like for you um in la mm -hmm. and he's just like he is the way he is on tv mm -hmm. and it's just yeah. like really easy to talk to really cool but also like that same voice the same energy like that's jeff all the time so it was like very, it was like, it was very well, but then like, I remember being told like, oh, like he's, he's cool. Like, don't worry. Like, it's, it's not going to be as like, oh my God, it's Jeff Probes is like, you think it's going to be. And that was also very true. Like very approachable. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He seems, he seems cool. I mean, he was chill when he gave me the fist bump in my dream. So, nice. um, yeah, no, he, he went out of his way to do it and I appreciate that. So. I don't want to tell him about that because that'll probably creep him the fuck out. But um, I, yeah. I just I just had to ask. So anyways, that is about all the time we got for this episode of the Burton Burger podcast. Sydney, thank you very much for coming on the show. I mean, do you want to you want to shout out your shit where people can find you, where they can see more of Miss Queen Sydney going forward? That's exactly where Queen Sydney on Instagram. That's the handle. Never changed it. <laughs> Heck yeah absolutely so go check out sydney first contestant of survivor that came on the bnb &B podcast guys so again thank you so much for coming on the show bert thanks thanks anyways um, best. <laughs> thank you very much to all of you guys and gals that listened to this episode of the burton burger podcast we're just trying to bring a little bit of the family element to the podcast world. Remember, guys, it's just comedy. Calm down. Other than that, thank you. Thank you so much, Cindy, for coming on the show. We thank you. appreciate it. Hell yeah. All right, guys, we will see you all in the next episode. Take care, everybody. Peace.